I met our brother here with some friends in a, in a Welsh town called Dowlas. Dowlas is up the tracks from our village about six miles. I worked with a lot of men in the coal mines from Dowlas. They were nearly all from Dowlas, the fellows that I worked with. Let me tell you a little story about Dowlas. It's how the Welsh revival came to our village. The schoolmaster in our village was a man called T.C. Thomas. This was in 1904. He heard that the great Welsh revivalist, Evan Roberts, was in Dowlas. And so after school one evening, he went up to Dowlas and, like everyone else, caught fire. You just could not go into those revival meetings without catching fire. He came down after the, uh, after the service was over. He came down on the Welsh coal, on the, on the coal miners' train. He'd gone into the village about quarter to ten. Now, I don't know if it's the same now, but at ten o'clock all the taverns closed. I think it might be a little later now, but uh, ten o'clock all the taverns closed. He came off the train at the railway station, the railroad depot. He was so filled with God that he couldn't go home. He wore a top silk hat and silk tails and a, a silver silver uh, knob cane. And He got off the train, came out of the railroad station, and right there on the road, in those days, even when we were younger, they were still cobbled stones, he took off his hat and laid down his cane and got on his knees and began to sing the praises of God. You see... We will learn perhaps better one day that the, all the world, this whole world, moves on, on, on music, on sound impulses and music. And what a great thing it is to, to, express the, uh, to express the things of God in music. The Apostle Paul said that one of the great signs of being filled with the Holy Spirit is singing to yourselves, not speaking to yourselves, singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. He's put a song in our hearts. Hallelujah. And so, um, my grandmother was coming up the, the hill, the, the, the bottom of the village, coming up with a friend uh, of hers that we got to know very well, Mrs. Naomi George. They were coming up and they heard this singing and they couldn't tell where it was coming from. And she went to the janitor of the Church of England, again, a dear old lady that I knew in later years, Mrs. Bernal, and said, Mrs. Bernal, you've locked the vicar in the church. <laughs> And Mrs. Bernal said, never. She said, oh yes, we can hear him singing. And so Mrs. Bernal got the key and went to the Church of England, which of course was also the Church of Wales, but the Church of England. And uh, there was no vicar in the church. And they could hear this singing, coming from nowhere, but coming from everywhere. You see, just, just below, just, just, just 50 yards or less than that, below where T.C. Thomas was singing, was the station hotel, a tavern. And the men heard him sing. You've never really heard him singing until you've heard a bunch of Welshmen outside or inside a tavern singing. And uh, someone said, T.C. Thomas has gone mad. He's on his knees up there singing. And some of them with the glasses in their hand went up and they stood around poor old T.C. Thomas. And there he was with tears streaming down his face and his hands up to God singing uh, because all Welsh hymnology is packed full of the blood of Jesus Christ. And he was singing and magnifying the blood of Jesus. And you know, just 15 yards above it is Sammy's billiard hall. Oh, I play billiards in Sammy's many times. And the fellas looked out of the window. And they said, T.C. Thomas is going mad. <laughs> and so they put down their billiard cues and came out, and some of them with a cue still in their hand, and they stood around, poor old T.C. Thomas, and now here they were from the station hotel. Here they were from Sammy's billiard hall. It was only quarter to ten at, at night, and now by ten o'clock, we'll say, and some of the women came out, and, 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 and strange things began to happen. T.C. Thomas was quite unaware of any of them being there. He was praising God. And then, and then one man with a beer glass in his hand got down on his knees and began to join with T.C. Thomas. And another, and another, and another, until by the time my grandmother came up the hill, there they were, dozens of men, some of them with beer glasses in their hand, some of them with billiard cues in their hand, housewives with their aprons on, standing around, falling on their knees, and that night, scores of people gave their heart to Jesus Christ. Not a preacher near them, 
the Holy Spirit falling, hallelujah, singing and praising and magnifying Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You know, there's a Scottish chorus that says, it's a prayer that says, once more, Lord, once more. Scotland's had some great revivals. Not national ones like Wales, but great revivals. Once more, Lord, once more, as in the days of yore, on this dear land thy spirit pour, set Scotland now on fire. Wouldn't it be great if men and women of all communions, it doesn't matter what, began to sing once more, Lord, once more, as in the days of yore. On this dear land thy spirit pour, set America now on fire. Hallelujah. That's how the revival came to our village. My grandfather never got saved. He would tell my grandmother, you come home here tonight after being in that meeting and I'll beat you up. And my grandmother and Naomi George would go to the church and say, we've got to be home before 10 o'clock tonight. That's the time that their husbands came out of the pubs, out of the taverns. We've got to be home. <laughs> they were never home before 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> never. 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 Oh, how many times. I wish I could be here all day telling you how many times God moved. And he's still the same. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.